Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze a fixed beam when it carries triangular load. The intensity of the triangular load in the point A is 0 and in the point B it is W. In this analysis we are going to find out the fixed end moments, the reactions and also we are going to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. In this beam let us make a section. You can see that I have made a section at the distance of x from the point A. In this section we have to find the intensity of the loading. That means we have to find this height for the distance L, the height is W, but I want the height at the distance of X, so I have to multiply with the X. When I do that, I am getting the intensity of loading Wx upon L. In the section, let us consider an elemental distance dx. The load acting for the elemental distance dx is wx upon L into dx. The fixed end moments due to the elemental load are dma and dmb. Let us make a formula for dma. Let us see how this formula comes in the fixed beam. When the concentrated load W is acting at a distance of A from the left side, we know the formulas for the fixed end moments. MA is WAB square upon L square and MB is WA square B upon L square. In this analysis, we are going to use these formulas. We just saw the formula for MA for the concentrated load acting at a distance of A. Here, instead of W, we have to apply Wx upon L dx. Instead of A, we have to apply X. Instead of B, we have to apply L minus X. From here, to find out MA, we have to make integration the limits for the integration are 0 to L because the triangular load acts from the distance 0 to the distance L. So the limits are 0 to L. From here, let us take W and L cube outside because they are constants. For L minus X, the whole square let us apply the formula a minus b the whole square. The formula is a square minus 2ab plus b square. Using the formula we are getting this. Then let us multiply this with the x square. When we do that we are getting this. Then let us do integration. Using this formula we can make the integration. When we integrate x square, we will get x cube upon 3. When we integrate x cube, we will get x power 4 upon 4. When we integrate x power 4, we will get x power 5 upon 5. Then let us apply the limits. No need to apply the lower limit 0 because when we apply the whole term will become 0. Only apply the upper limit L. Instead of x, we have to apply L. When we do that, we will get this. L square into L cube, we will get L power 5. L into L power 4, we will get L power 5. Then, let us take LCM. We can multiply 3, 2 and 5. When we do that, we will get 30. We have to multiply this term with 10 on the numerator and denominator. We have to multiply this term with 15 on the numerator and denominator. Finally, we have to multiply this term 
with 6 on the numerator and denominator. So we will get the common denominator 30. When we add these three terms, we will get L power 5. Then we can eliminate this L cube. Here it will be square. Finally, we are getting MA which is equal to WL square upon 30. Now let us make the formula for DMB. We know that for the concentrated load acting at a distance of A, the formula for the fixed end moment MB is WA square B upon L square. Here instead of W, we have to apply Wx upon L into dx. Instead of A, we have to apply x. And instead of B, we have to apply L minus x. From here, to find out MB, we have to make integration. We know that the limits for the integration are 0 to L. From here, we can take W and L cube outside. Then let us multiply X cube with this term. When we do that, we are getting this. Now let us start integrating. When we integrate X cube, we will get X power 4 upon 4. When we integrate X power 4, we will get X power 5 upon 5. Then let us apply the limits. No need to apply the lower limit 0 because when we apply the whole term will become 0. So no need to apply and waste the time. Only apply the upper limit L. Instead of X we have to apply L. L into L power 4 we will get L power 5. Then let us take LCM 5 into 4 we will get 20. When we add these two terms, we will get L power 5. Let us eliminate L cube. Here it will be square. Finally for MB, we are getting WL square upon 20. In this analysis, we have found the formulas for the fixed end moments MA and MB. MA will be acting in the anticlockwise direction and MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. Now we are going to find out the vertical reactions. First I am going to find out RA. For that I am going to take moment about B. In this case I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. The vertical reaction RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is L. The triangular load is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. For the triangular load, we have to multiply the area with the centroid distance. We know the formula for the area of a triangle, half into breadth into height. Here the breadth is L, the height is W. So the area is half into L into W. The centroid distance towards the height is 1 upon 3 into L. MB is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. Let us take these three terms on the right side. They will come on the right side with the change of signs. Then let us take LCM. Let us keep LCM as 60. We have to multiply this term with 2 on the numerator and denominator. For this term, we have to multiply with 10 and finally for this term we have to multiply with 3 so that we will get 60 in the denominator. When we add these 3 values we will get 9 WL square, 3 3s are 9, 3 20s are 60. 
So for RA, we are getting 3 WL upon 20. Now using the rule, sigma V is equal to 0, we can find out RB. RA and RB are acting upwards. So both of them will be positive. The triangular load is acting downwards. So it will be negative. To find out the total load in the triangular loading, we have to find out the area. We know the formula for the area of a triangle, half into breadth into height. Here the breadth is L, the height is W. Then let us take these two terms on the right side. We have already found RA. Let us apply that. Then let us take LCM as 20. 10 WL minus 3 WL. We will get 7 WL. So RB is 7 WL upon 20. Using the reactions RA and RB, we can draw the shear force diagram. The diagram will be in the shape of parabola. Here we have to find out the distance where the shear force becomes zero. Let us make a section when it becomes zero at a distance of x from the point A. We know that at the distance of x, the intensity of the loading will be Wx upon L. We have derived this in the beginning of the analysis. Let us find out the shear force in the section from the point A. In this case, we are moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. The reaction is acting upwards, so it will be positive. The triangular load is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For this triangle, we have to find out the area. We know the formula for the area of a triangle, half into breadth into height. Here the breadth is x, the height is wx upon l. So the area is half into x into wx upon l. We know that at the distance of x the shear force is 0. x into x we will get x square. Then let us take this term on the right side. So it will become positive. Then let us take w upon 2l on the right side. It will come inversely. Then we can eliminate W. 2 into 3, we will get 6. L into L, we will get L square. To find out X, we have to take root. Finally, for X, we will get 0.5477L. Now, let us find the bending moment in the section. I am going to find out the bending moment from the point A. In this case, I am moving towards the right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is X. The triangular load is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. For this triangle, we have to multiply the area with the centroid. This is the area, this is the centroid distance. Finally, for the bending moment at the section, we are getting this. We know that when shear force becomes zero, the bending moment will be maximum. So at the distance of x, the bending moment will be maximum. We have already found the distance of x that is 0.5477L. Here instead of x, let us apply 0.5477L. Now using the calculator, 
we can find out the maximum bending moment which is equal to 0.0214 WL square. Now let us draw the bending moment diagram using MA and MB. We can plot these two points. Also just before we have found the maximum bending moment. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.